What is going on, guys? It's been a long time since I started recording, but I'm um, pretty sure some of you guys know that, you know, some time like last month or whatever it is, I got a ticket for my exhaust. Yeah, I got a citation for a loud exhaust non correctable 27151A. Two, Something says that. I am not allowed to modify a motor vehicle's exhaust to make it loud. It's fuck California. So, that's my Tome. Sedan fenders and my whole two stage two setup right here. Yay. Yeah. But anyway, um, so I got, in the, I got the scheduled appointment for the 24th uh, of this month. June 24th, I believe. That's a Wednesday. Um, but whatever. I just gotta go through it and take that bitch to court, see what they could do, see if, you know, if I pass the state ref or the decibel test, I should be able to get a smaller fine, maybe. Um, depends if I become compliant with California standards. Um, not really a guarantee that, you know, it's going to get re reduced or I'm going to get let off so easily. I mean, it's my first offense, it's my first citation ever, and I never really dealt with the police before. So hopefully they, hopefully they let me go quick. But anyway, today's going to be like a small video. It's going to be quick. It's going to be easy. It's going to be simple. Something that every Subaru should do, especially if it's a 2003 or older. So like, you know. Keep it simple. It's it, this this thing that I'm doing. It's a hit or miss. It's pretty hard. It's the idle air control valve. Now, people on the forums talk about oh, the strip the screws are soft. They break easily. Blah 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 blah. But I mean, I I got it out already. I broke it off. Um, I'll show you guys. This is the oversized um, flathead trick. So the idle air control valve is right here. Technically, this whole piece from right, not this right here, but this piece, all the way to here. Also, it's recommend to work on it while it's cool because this is right here, or this is right, this right here is a coolant line. So you don't want to open this when it's pressurizing and just blow up. Anyway, so what I did now was I put the oversized flathead in the long spot or long slot right here. Sorry for the awkward angle. And then what I did was like, I pushed down on it as hard as I can. And then I had like two, both of my hands on here, like a firm grip. And then I, you know, had my arm stiff as hell. And then I just moved my body one direction. I pivoted my body while adding a lot of pressure on it here to get these both open. Usually, uh, they would strip because how soft they are and like, you know, how old they are, but you know I might be using the same ones because I'm just too lazy to go to the store and buy a new one But I think the, this thread is m5 by 20 Let me let me double check on that for you. Okay, so I was right. So it's m5 by 20 millimeters um, I'm pretty sure you're able to get like a little hex Hex screw bit or another screw or a bolt whatever you whatever like you really feel like using but i think if i'm able to reuse this one i'll reuse it so the reason why i'm doing this is because my car is stalling every time i go to neutral um or when i shift to neutral so it could be a vacuum leak somewhere behind the intercooler or like back the vacuum lines or it could be the idle air control valve um the thing that gets stuck. I'll show you what I mean by when it gets stuck. There's also a lot of better ways to clean it. I'm just doing it like as best as I can because I'm not too sure on um, what these guys mean by, you know, cleaning the idle air control valve. Some people take it, take the full thing apart and then like they spin it and then like people tell me not to spin it, but I'll show you in a second when I have to get it all out, so. Okay, so I just got it out. Um, this screw is what I'm talking about right here, and then this and just pull it off. And don't forget to unplug this. The way you unplug it is just push this down hella hard. And then just pull out that way. But yeah, so this is the idle air control valve gasket. I have a brand new one inside the house. It's recommended 
to have a brand new gasket on the spot because it's either this is broken, warped, or very brittle. So, I mean, from just looking at it right now, it looks it looks fine. Uh, it just looks warped right now because I, I took it out. So, I mean, it could be also the reason why my car is stalling is like, this thing is like extremely dirty. Like, here, let me go get a light. But you can see how dark it is in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning this now. Uh, what you'll really need is rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. This is how I'm gonna do it. Um, there's a lot of other, oops, oops. There's a lot of different ways to clean these. Um, people said to take it apart, fill it up with gasoline, let it sit, blah, 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 blah. But, I don't have gasoline. I mean, I could always siphon it from the car since I'm on a full tank, but I just, I don't want to do it. So, I mean, what you technically do is this. You get the Q-tip and just, just rub it all in there. Just get it all clean. Don't scrub that shit clean in there. Just like, you know, as you rub it against the wall, twist. So you grab everything and, of course, don't score anything inside because of all the dirt and grime. I don't know what could be in there, but... All right, let's get let's get to cleaning, and then I'll catch up to you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I got it clean. Not the best, but I mean, it's what the alcohol and some carb cleaner can do. So, I mean, I just sent it with a choking carb cleaner from Gum Out with the jet spray, whatever it is. Let's set up the light right here. Oops. Sorry for this piece of shit light. It's not from fucking Harbor Freight. Or actually it is from Harbor Freight, but it's a different one anyway. Um It's a lot cleaner than before. So um I just in between this crevice right here, I just sprayed the shit out of it and more gunk came out. Um, on this side, I wasn't able to get, like, there's, like, a little line right there in the middle of the screen below this little lip right here. I'm pretty sure you can see where the tip of my nail is. Um, that's, there's probably going to be gunk in there I really can't get to. I mean, you can kind of see it right there, but, yeah, so, I mean, it's cleaner than what it is before, so it should be better. Um, uh, inside here I clean, like I sprayed more and more and more, um, now it's just, you know, a matter of time to just let it air dry. Oh yeah, this has to air dry for, I don't know how long, but long enough for it to be completely dry, not wet, not anything. So now, set that there, and now let's just take off this gasket. Uh, sick. It's still a good piece. One piece, it's still really flimsy. I'm gonna use it again. Oh boy. So when you clean it with the Q-tip, this is all the shit that came out of it. I think this was the worst one. Like, look how, how much gunk that is. It's terrible, but I mean, this, it's just extras. But yeah, so after watching this video, you know, I guess you guys can decide whether to use this or not. But I mean, it's up to you the part number <laughs> just like that the new gasket fits don't be a dumbass like me um i was cleaning like the inside of this with like a q-tip and alcohol when i got to right here i accidentally pushed it too hard and i think alcohol went in inside the coolant thing but i mean uh, that's only a, like a like a drop i mean whatever my car catches fire i don't know why but yeah, so now I'm gonna let this thing air dry and then, you know, put it back on after. Well, going off the base of the information from Nasiok, um, after you torque down and reapply the idle air control valve, um, oh yeah, the screws for the idle air control valve, they're 2.1 foot pounds of torque, something like that. But anyway, after you get all that stuff settled down, um, you want to idle the car, I guess, operating temp for like 10 minutes. Uh, some time, like, you know, when you have time for that. Um, so after you idle it for 10 minutes, uh, according to Nasiok, once again, 
10 mile drive, no boost. Let it idle again for like 10, 20 minutes. And then drive it again. Do whatever you want. Put boost on it, whatever you want. Um, also, as you let it idle, check for leaks. Common sense things, check for leaks. And no leaks, you're good. Turn off the car, let it sit. Turn it on again for 20 minutes. Drive it whatever you want. You don't even have to drive it. Just let it idle. Check for leaks again. And you're good. And you're good. If nothing happens, then you're good. But I just hope this fixes my problem with the uh, stalling in the neutral shit. Because, I mean, I can't, I can't fucking find any vacuum leaks. Fucking sucks. I don't know why, but whatever. All right? So, that's about it. That's so I think that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys, you know, the turning on the car process, you know, letting it idle. But, you know, you know y'all can do that on yourself. Um, but it is on Nasiok. The full, the full write-up is on Nasiok. Idle air control valve cleaning. I think you just type that, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the first link. But it's a, it's a really good write-up. Really long. Shout out to my brother-in-law to show me it. But anyway, see you guys later. And I will also be posting another video. Don't know when, but probably when the killer beheaders come up. But see ya.